So today we're going to do the handover video on this Bursnet Solano. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. So firstly, coming over to the passenger side, you'll notice that you've got your fill up points for your diesel. And opening up the passenger door, you can see within the door sill, you've got your tyre pressures. On the passenger side as well, you'll also notice that you've got a bonnet release catch here, which I release for us now. And with the bonnet open, you can see it will gain you access to your brake disc fluid, which is up here. You've then got your engine coolant below that, your power steering fluid, and up in the corner here, you'll also notice you've got your washer fluid. Below the engine coolant, you've also got your engine oil, and finally, your dipstick. Now to jumpstart this vehicle, should you ever need to, you've got your positive terminal, which is just located here. And your negative terminal just connects onto this nipple here, as you can see. Moving around to the side of the vehicle, you can see that you've got a Fiamma awning fitted to this motorhome. Now I'll send you a separate link showing you how the awning operates. As you can appreciate, I've just got the one hand in this video, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to show you. Um, so I'll send you a separate link to show you how that can operate. It's dead easy. Uh, the main two things that you need to remember about the awning is if it is a windy day, take the awning in. You don't want any gust of wind getting underneath the awning, as that could potentially rip the canopy and tear it away from the vehicle. And also, if it is raining like it is today, don't take the awning out. You can if you want, uh, you know, you, it is fully usable. However, you will need to dry it at some point. And if you don't dry it quick enough, it could potentially lead to mould and rot. So, if it is raining, I personally recommend just take the awning away. Moving on, you can then see you've got your habitation door. We'll jump on the inside once I've done the outside. Moving along, brings us to your chimney. Um, this is in essence your, your chimney, it's your trim event for when the boiler is operating. You don't want to cover this area up and certainly give it a wide berth as it can get quite hot around the bottom. Next to that you'll notice that we're plugged into your 230 volt electric so when you're on your campsite this is where you can plug in and this will gain you access um, to anything that's 230 volt in the vehicle. For example this vehicle has got a microwave fitted um, so when you're plugged in that will allow you to operate it. Anything 230 volt of course will not uh, will not allow you to use it um, if you're not plugged in uh, as your leisure battery on board the vehicle is only 12 volt so only 12 volt things like your lights and things will work on that so just bear that in mind. Next up is then your gas locker and with the gas locker door open you can see you've got, a, uh, you've got um, space for two uh, gas bottles and your gas regulator is just located in the middle. Now you'll need a pigtail which will then connect onto your gas regulator via this thread which will then feed into the gas bottle and then you can simply turn your gas on at the bottle and that will flow the gas through. Now please be uh, aware that when you're traveling you should have the gas off as indicated by this sticker here on the back wall. You should never travel with the gas on because if you're involved in a collision as you can imagine it's, uh, it's highly dangerous so when you're traveling turn the gas off simply at the bottle and when you're stationary and you're on site you can of course turn that on and feed it through the vehicle and like I say you've got space for two gas bottles and you can tie them in using these tie down points here. Moving on from the gas locker you've then got a little bit of storage up at the top here and you can see that it gains you access to your slide out cassette. Now to slide the cassette out all you'll need to do is push up on this yellow tab and pull the cassette towards you. Now before pulling the cassette towards you please ensure that the blade on the toilet is closed. If the blade is open that will make contact with the cassette and it won't allow you to pull the cassette out. Um, what can happen is you'll then go to pull it out and it'll get jammed and subsequently break. So please ensure that the blade on the toilet is closed and I'll show you where that blade is as we move on to the inside of the motorhome. Now just coming a little bit closer to show you how this works, as I say, you pull up on the yellow tab, slide the cassette out towards you, and then the cassette is free. With the cassette out, all you'll need to do to drain it is simply turn out the funnel like that, remove the yellow cap, and click the yellow button on the back just here. That will release an internal vacuum on the cassette and will allow you to empty all the contents. Once you've done that, if you're using blue fluid to break down the waste on the inside of the cassette, you can use this, um, uh, this cap 
which has got a little measurement which will indicate how much fluid you'll need to put in to break down the contents. Once you've done that, pulled the cassette back in, there we are, like so, and then the cassette is ready to go. Now one thing to mention, you will also notice that there's this yellow valve here. This actually does turn, um, like so. This is what makes contact with the blade that I mentioned on the inside of the motorhome. And like I said, it will open and close the cassette. This should always stay in this position. You should never need to turn this, as this is, if this is slightly off, the cassette won't go back into position. And again, if you push it and force it, it will break. So just bear that in mind. Once you've emptied all the, content, uh, the contents, you can put the cassette back into position and slide it in like, pl uh, into place like so, and you'll notice that the yellow, cap, uh, look, yellow clip rather, has clipped in. Underneath the storage locker up at the top, you've also a little bit more storage in this drawer underslung in the vehicle. And this is all plastic lined as well, um, so you'll be fine to put anything damp or wet on the inside of there. Moving around to the rear of the motorhome, you'll notice that you've got your reverse camera which is up at the back there. You've then got your bike rack along the back. With your bike rack I can show you on the day how to operate this, it's really simple. All you'll need to do is pull the bike rack down towards you and then using these press, press in and these will release and allow you to tie these like a, um, like a zip tie around your tyres. And then using these bars here, they will connect to the frame of the bike, ensuring that it's all nice and secure during transit. If you'd like me to show you on the day, I'll have no issues in doing that. Moving around to the other side, you'll notice you've got another locker here. And just like the previous locker, open this up. This actually goes all the way through to the side. And again, this is all plastic lined, so feel free to put anything wet or damp in this area. Now next to the locker, underneath, you'll notice that you've got a grey pipe. This brings us on to your first drain down point in the motorhome. Now you've got three main drain down points in the vehicle. You've got the wastewater drain down, which is here, and the two others are your fresh water and your boiler. They're located on the inside of the vehicle. Now when you're on site, there'll be a big grid that you can drive over. Simply drive the vehicle over that, line it up with the grid, turn all the valves and dump all of the water. I'd recommend that when you're finished, dump all your water. You don't really want to be traveling with water due to your payload and your weight distribution. And once you've done that, you'll be good to go. To drain down the wastewater, all you've got to do is turn the handle, which is up at the top here. It's a little bit difficult to show you on, that, on the video. I hope you can see that. Just turn that, which is just here, and that will release all of the water on the outside of the vehicle. Moving on from the wastewater drain down, and as I say, we'll, we'll move on to the uh, fresh and the boiler when we're on the inside of the vehicle. I'll go into more depth about them. Uh, you've got a point for an external aerial, should you need it. And then you'll notice that you've got your fridge vents, which is just on the side of the motorhome. This is, of course, where the fridge pulls all of its air from. So as you can appreciate, if it's pulling all of its air from here, to make sure it runs a little bit more efficiently, if you can keep this area under shade or keep it um, you know, facing away from the sun, it will just help the fridge run a little bit more efficiently. So if you have got the sun on a day baking down on this side of the vehicle, just turn it round or keep it under shade uh, and it would just help the fridge run a little bit more efficiently. Uh, moving on, next to this you've then got your fill-up point for your fresh water tank. Your fresh water tank on this vehicle will hold approximately 100 litres, it may hold a little bit more but it's thereabouts. Um, to fill this up you will need a, full, a food grade hose pipe, that's what I'd personally recommend. The reason for a food grade hose pipe is that will ensure that when you are filling up the tank no bacteria gathers up in the pipe and ends up in the tank. Now. I don't personally recommend drinking out the fresh water tank uh, directly. You're all right to boil the kettle and, and of course, uh, washing the water. However, to drink straight out the tank, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend taking some bottled water. Um, but it's dead simple. All you'll need to do, there's a key on this. Just remove this cap, put your, uh, your food grade hose pipe in there and you can fill it up until it starts overflowing and then you're good to go. You can move on to your pitch. Now, as I mentioned previously, I personally wouldn't recommend driving with a full tank of, uh, um, of water due to your payload and your weight distribution. I would only fill this up when you're on site. And of course, when you're filling it up, you do need to ensure that all your drain down points are closed, mainly your fresh water tank. 
um, to avoid any water from draining outside of the vehicle. And then finally, just to conclude on the outside, following on from the fresh water, uh, located in here is where your leisure battery is, um, just in this locker here. So if you ever need to replace it, it's nice and accessible um, should you need to. So that concludes the outside of the motorhome. We're now going to move on to the inside. I'd like to start just by saying that the vehicle hasn't had a valet as of yet. Um, so please excuse any, uh, any, any bits uh, that you see. Uh, I'm just trying to get this video out to you just before you collect. So moving on to the inside and through the habitation door, you'll notice straight above you to the left, you've got your main control panel. So on the control panel, firstly, you've got your 12 volt button that will turn everything on. So when you turn that on, that will activate the leisure battery and that will then allow you to run your lights off it through the vehicle and anything that is 12 volt. To turn that off, simply flick it down. You'll notice these lights do, do remain on. These are your porch lights, you can turn them off via the light switch, which is just to the left of the door. Turning the 12 volt panel uh, back on, and moving on, you've next got your pump button. Turn the pump on to, of course, activate the pump should you need it. Now, the only time you should activate the pump is if you've got fresh water in the tank. If you haven't got any water in the tank and you click that pump on, you do run the risk of it burning, especially after a long period of time. So please ensure that you've got water in before you select the pump. Once you've done that, you can come to all of your taps, including uh, the shower, and all you've got to do is turn it on and turn it to hot. What that will do is it'll pull fresh water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and then out of the tap. It will spurt and splutter, and then when it's running steadily, you've primed your boiler for your hot water. Once you've done that, flick it over to cold. Again, same goes for all your taps, including your shower. And when, that spurt, when it's finished spurting and spluttering, you've primed your system for your fresh water, uh, sorry, for your cold water. So once everything's primed, hot and cold, and all the taps are, uh, are primed and, and good to go, you can actually leave your pump on because in each of your taps, you've got something called a micro switch, which will activate and deactivate the pump whenever you need it. The only time, like I mentioned, that you will need to turn that pump off is, for example, you do run out of water. Now coming away from the tap and back up to your control panel, you'll also notice up here you've got some gauges which I'll get onto shortly, but I just wanted to point this out. You can see, as indicated by the light, we are plugged in and we are receiving 230 volt power. This is a great indicator for if you have a fault on the vehicle and you can't get any 230 volt to the uh, vehicle, and um, just ensure that this light is on because that indicates there's a fault with the van and not the site that you're plugged into. Next up, you've then got, if you click this button on, this will turn it on. It will indicate the time. And also, the button next to it will show you the inside temperature as well as the external temperature as well. Next to that, you've then got your gauges for your fresh water and your waste water, along with your battery gauges, one for your leisure battery and one for your vehicle battery. Firstly, your fresh water is at the top, so hold that and you can see that gauge will show you that we're about half full at the moment on the fresh tank. Your waste tank, hold that down uh, and you can see there's nothing really in it. The gauge moves ever so slightly, so it doesn't, it doesn't give you much. Um, obviously when you fill that up, this gauge will move depending on how much you've got in. So that's your fresh up and your down is your waste and your leisure battery is up. You can see we're at nearly pretty much 100% because we're plugged in and your vehicle battery is down hold that down and again we're pretty much at full there just like so finally on this control panel as well you will also notice that you've got a little uh, triangle with an error uh, an exclamation mark in it that's if you get an error on the panel if you do just give us a call and we'll help you get through it in the corner here, you've got a temperature sensor for your heating. Now that brings us on to heating. The controls for the heating are just beside the locker on the door. Now, this vehicle has a boiler. It's a Truma boiler. And it's actually a combi boiler. And you have a couple of options. So the top gauge, which is here, runs off gas. The bottom gauge runs off electric. So depending on what you want. Now the electric is a combination. So you can either have it off at the moment or if you flick it on, 
that will turn it on. Now I'm not going to run it for too long because we've no, I don't think we've got any water in the boiler, so you don't want to burn out uh, that. But that will, what, what that will do is it will heat your hot water, uh, sorry, it will heat your water and the vehicle itself purely off 230 volt electric. But bear in mind, it, that will only work when you're plugged into electric. If you're not plugged into electric, you'll need to run it off gas. If you're running it off gas, you, you use this little dial here. In the middle, it is off, but then you can turn this dial depending on what you want and what you want to select. So I'm just going to turn it off for the time being. At the top is your water heating, so you can run purely just your water heating off gas. You've got the option of 40 degrees or 60 degrees, so when you're having a shower, you're probably running it off 40 degrees, but the majority of the time, if you want to get it up to temperature the quickest, you'll run it off your 60 degrees. Below, just a little gas flame, that indicates that you want to run the entire vehicle off um, gas and that is just for the vehicle's heating, so that won't heat the water. But then if you want to heat the water and the vehicle at the same time off the gas, flick this all the way down this dial to this icon where it shows you a gas symbol um, and the 60 degree mark and that will allow you to run the entire, th uh, the entire vehicle off gas heating the water and the motor on at the same time. Turning around, you've then got your kitchen area to the right of you, and then you've got your seating area to the left. You'll notice that just by the door, you've also got your awning handle there, and up above the kitchen area, you've got your microwave that I mentioned on the outside of the motorhome. And again, that will only work when you are plugged in to mains electric. Beneath here, you've then got your hobs, which will run just off gas and then you've got a really good bit of storage throughout the, uh, the kitchen area. Opposite the kitchen area you've as I mentioned got the uh, the lounge area. Uh, you've got seat belts fitted to these forward facing seats here and of course your two captions uh, chairs do swivel. Your fuses in this motorhome are actually located underneath the passenger seat so you can access them just by removing the front grille on the uh, on the seat at the back here pull that off and that will access all your fuses. I do recommend taking some spare fuses with you on the campsite um, should anything blow. It's often uh, it's often the case that, so please ensure that if anything uh, blows, you have got some spare fuses um, to replace them with. Uh, they are just generic fuses, so just get, grab them from Halfords or anything like that, um, just in case. Now, underneath your uh, two traveling seats is where your fresh water tank is located which I'll show you, for, uh, I'll remove the seats now and I'll show you where that is. And just like that, you can see I remove the cushions, pop the base up and it'll gain you access to your fresh water tank. The only thing you need to know in here really is if you're draining the tank down, which as I say, every time you're not using the motorhome needs to be done. If you're using it, you can obviously have water in because this will only freeze if you freeze, but please ensure that when you're not using the vehicle, this is completely drained down. I'd also say the same thing for your waste water tank. So I'd recommend leaving that open all the time and just putting a bucket underneath because that tank is under slung. So it could potentially freeze when you're using the motorhome. But the internal tanks, they're absolutely fine to, of course, keep um, sealed for when you're using the vehicle. However, like I mentioned, when you're not using the van, simply drain it down. To drain this tank down, all you've got to do is remove this red cap like so. And attached to the red cap is a metal chain. Pull that chain and that will release a bung on the inside, which will then drain everything down. When you're wanting to seal it, just stick your hand in there, pop the bung back into position and then tighten the red cap like so. This red cap also gives you access to the inside of the tank where you can then clean it should you need to. But as this is only fresh water that's going in the tank, there's no real need to do that often. And just like that, you're back to your lounge. In here, you've got a really good bit of storage as well. And like I mentioned, you've got the same on this side. Above me in the ki uh, in the living area, rather, you've got a really nice size um, uh, roof vent. To open this up, all you'll need to do is turn these plastic catches. Just unwind like so. 
and wind it like so and that will open everything up we're underneath the canopy at the moment so i'm not going to wind it up um, but all you're going to do is wind that and that will wind up and allow a little bit of airflow through please ensure that when you're traveling this entire roof fence is sealed correctly and that goes th the same for these clips please ensure these are clipped in all the way and that will create a nice seal because you don't want any wind getting underneath there when you're traveling as it could potentially rip off the entire um, front section uh, of the window. In here as well, you've got some fly screens and below that, you've also got a blackout blind as well. That pulls all the way across, of course, to black out the, the entire cab. Now, the same goes for, uh, like I mentioned on the skylight, the same goes for the, uh, for the side windows. You've got a blackout blind here and a fly screen, a screen that you pull down. And like I said, when you're traveling, please ensure all these windows are closed. As this is a slider, you can actually travel with this window open should you want to. I personally wouldn't recommend it, um, but as it does slide and doesn't hinge out, you can get away with it uh, should you want a little bit of airflow through the vehicle on the move. Okie dokie, so going back to the midpoint of the vehicle, which is just opposite the uh, habitation door, you've got your oven and grill, which is just up at the top here. You can operate that using this dial and of course this uses gas and then below that you've got your freezer up at the top and then your fridge to operate the fridge uh, and the freezer you've got uh, three options you can either run it off gas which is this little flame here you can run it off your 230 volt electric or you can run it off your 12 volt leisure battery now the great thing with this fridge is as you as you can see it's got an auto function which will automatically select whichever fuel you've got um, supplied to the fridge which is dead handy now a lot of people think that when the wild camping so i.e not plugged in they can use the fridge off the 12 volt leisure battery however that's not the case if it was it would simply burn all the energy and power that the, that the battery's got and would leave you with nothing so you can only use this fridge off your gas when you're wild camping the only time you can run it off your 12 volt leisure battery is when you've got the ignition running because this vehicle has got a built-in alternator which when the engine's running will send power from the vehicle battery into the leisure battery which can then power the fridge so just bear that in mind now like i mentioned this has got an automatic function on it so that will automatically assign whichever fuel you've got so i just leave it on auto personally um, and then that way as i say it will just assign whichever you've got You've got a button here as well, um, which will uh, will basically recirculate the air in the fridge should you want to. And on the other side, you've got a temperature gauge again to uh, to to decide uh, to change the, the temperature of the the freezer and the fridge. Now, uh, one thing to know about these uh, fridges is they're not as powerful um, as a domestic fridge that you typically get at home. So with that in mind, what I'd recommend is if you want frozen things in the freezer, put frozen things in. And if you want cooled things in the uh, in the fridge, put cooled things in. As they do a really good job at maintaining the temperature of things, but they do struggle from time to time, especially on a hot day, to get them down to temperature. So if you do that, you'll be good to go. You've also got some little locks on here so you can lock the fridge doors in place for when you're travelling. Now one thing I did actually forget to mention um, when we were in the lounge area... Uh, is you've actually got these 230 volt sockets uh, which is just here so of course you do need to plug, be plugged in for these to operate uh, and also underneath the table you'll notice it's a bit difficult but just down there in the corner there you've got a little fan it's just a little switch that's all it's really easy turn that switch on you need to be plugged in for that to operate as well uh, and that will blow and recirculate the air through the vehicle um, should you should you feel like you've got hot and cold spots through the vehicle so when you've got your heating on that will just blow a fan and allow the heat to go and flow through the motorhome but like i say that will only work uh, when you're on 230 volt electric you have also got these other heat events which are throughout the vehicle and dotted around they will of course um send the uh, send the air through uh through you know to the desired location Okie okay, dokie, okay. so moving to the rear of the vehicle, you've got two single beds in this uh, motorhome. Uh, one of the beds has got storage underneath, the other one has got the boiler. So storage is underneath this one, really good bit of storage in fact. And like I mentioned, the boiler is actually located underneath here. This brings us on to your final drain down point, which is your boiler drain down point. Arguably one of the most important drain down points in the vehicle.
Now to drain down this tank, it is dead easy. You'll notice it's going to be a little bit difficult actually to show you on the video. So I'll just use my torch so you can see. Um, but you have got, I don't know whether you can see that, there's a little yellow valve which is down there, right at the bottom connected to that red pipe. This will allow you to drain down the boiler. At the moment, as it is facing down, it is closed. But if I was to use my hands and flick that up, like so, that is now open and that will allow the boiler to drain. I'll leave that open for the time being, um, but it's as simple as that. Flick it down to close and seal the boiler and flick it up to open the boiler. Now, obviously, when you're not using the vehicle, leave that up. But then when you're using it, make sure that that's down because if it's not down, you won't get any pressure building up in the boiler for when you want to prime the tank. Um, and of course, any water you do pull through will just drain out on the side of the vehicle. So just bear that in mind. Now, moving on from the boiler, on the fascia here, you've also got another socket, which is 230 volts. And then finally, you've also got some isolator valves. These are these red valves here. These will allow you to isolate certain areas of the vehicle. Now, everything you need to know is on that panel that I've uh, spoken through earlier. Um, this is really only for the technicians uh, when working on the vehicle. As I mentioned, they allow us to isolate certain, or certain areas of the vehicle uh, when working and testing on the appliances on the vehicle. Above the beds as well, you've got a really good bit of storage all along, which leads you all the way to the bathroom area. Now, we've spoken about priming your system for uh, your hot and cold water in the shower and with your tap, so there's not really much to go over there. The main thing, of course, to go over is the blade that I mentioned on the toilet. The blade that I keep mentioning is this piece of plastic here. At the moment, it is closed, pull towards you to open it. So when the cassette is in use, all you need to do is pull that towards you. That will, em uh, sorry, that will open the cassette so all the waste can drop into the cassette. Once you've done that, click that blue button, which is up at the top there. Bear in mind, you will need your pump on for that to activate. But click that, that will empty, or flush the system rather. And once you've done that, push the blade away from you and that will close the cassette. Now you close it for two reasons once you're finished. The main reason being is that will stop odours from escaping from the cassette. But the other reason is it will get you into the habit of having that closed. So every time you come to remove the cassette to empty it, you're not running into the issue of it uh, um, getting forced or, or locking into position. And finally, two uh, final things just to talk you through on the vehicle. You've got an aerial which is located here. The aerial, as you can see, is on at the moment. Hence why you've got the red light and there is a switch where you can turn the aerial on and off. I personally leave this on all the time. There's no need to turn it off. It doesn't really pull much from the leisure battery. Uh, you've got a little winder here to tilt the head of the aerial. And also you want to improve your range. Just undo this uh, white plastic piece here and push the aerial all the way up. And that will allow you to increase your range. And then right in the corner here is your trip box. So the vehicle ever trips, you can simply come to here um, and sort your trip out. Now that concludes the handover video on the Bursa Solano T700. I hope you enjoyed.